Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. We got a double treat for you today. <laughs> it's not only our news watch unit, but it's also our all English lecture. So we're not going to be speaking any Chinese today, but. Well, unfortunately, we are going to break that promise later on in the article because how can you not speak Chinese if you're talking about a Chinese person by the name of Chi Bolin who died tragically in a plane accident? And that's one of the news stories we'll be talking about today. Yeah, if we say his name, technically we are speaking Chinese, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. So but,、uh, can we be sued for that? No, but no additional Chinese is allowed today. Let's say our ninety nine point nine nine percent English、yeah. lecture today. Okay. Maybe ninety nine. <laughs> so in any case, I just mentioned one of the news stories today、mm. about the tragic death of the filmmaker Chi Boilin. We'll talk about that in a second, and we're also going to talk about something called. Wiki Tribune, which、uh, sounds like Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia that、uh, people can、uh, edit if they want to, or they can add comments to. But I guess they're turning into some kind of newspaper now, or at least coming out with some kind of online newspaper to try to get rid of the problem of fake news. Yeah, that'll never go away, will it? Fake news is here to stay. I'm afraid everyone has access to the internet now. You can post what you want, but the co-founder of Wikipedia—I didn't know who it was. Jimmy Wales. He's an American, although his name is certainly either Welsh or Irish. But he's an American entrepreneur, and he is a co-founder of Wikipedia. He's moving on to a new project. We're going to be talking about that. Wiki Tribune. A Tribune is often a word we. Used to talk about newspapers, so we'll get more into that. But first, guys, we're going to read through both stories first. Wiki Tribune turns readers into reporters. Jimmy Wales is best known for leading the team that created Wikipedia. His newest project is a plan to apply similar principles to a new area: news. This new project is called Wiki Tribune. It is designed to be a 100% ad-free website funded solely by donations from readers. News articles will list all their sources, and readers can not only check them out but also suggest corrections, just like on Wikipedia. Wales noticed that people's trust in news agencies has weakened, and that news articles can be biased, use bad sources. Or are sometimes even false. Therefore, Wiki Tribune will focus on providing people with transparent journalism that they know they can trust. Its team of ten journalists will be working together with readers to bring reliable, fact-based journalism to the internet. The site will also publish information about its funding regularly to show people it has no conflicts of interest. Wales hopes that by involving people in the process of writing news. He can make them feel they can trust it. Taiwan mourns Chi Poilin, Beyond Beauty director. Taiwan lost a beloved talent on June 10th when distinguished director Chi Poilin perished in a helicopter crash. Best known for his film Beyond Beauty, Taiwan from Above, Chi 52 was scouting locations for the film's sequel when the helicopter he was in crashed in Hualien County. The crash also killed the pilot and Chi's assistant. Chi was inspired to film Taiwan from above while working as a civil servant. In order to make his dream a reality, he quit his job at age 47 and mortgaged his house to pursue filmmaking. Chi's first film was a huge success, becoming the highest-grossing documentary in Taiwan's history. Chi wanted to portray the impact that humans have. On our natural environment, shooting dramatic pictures and videos of construction, tourism, and mining operations. Despite the negative human impact on the land, he ended his movie with a message of hope. As a choir of Aboriginal children sings at the peak of Yushan, an emotional message from the director appears on the screen: "Let us work together to make our home a better place." 
It's our all English lecture today, so we'll talk about the news stories that we're featuring today. The first one is entitled "Wiki Tribune Turns Readers into Reporters." So, turning readers into reporters, you as a reader can also be a reporter or a journalist, and maybe you can make your contribution to making truth more prevalent on the internet because fake news seems to be all over the place these days. Well, here's the first paragraph. It says Jimmy Wales is best known. For leading the team that created Wikipedia, you probably know all about Wikipedia. It's a good place to get information on a variety of subjects. We use it all the time for our program to get information, or at least get background information on the subjects that we're talking about. It's not the only source of information out there, but it is very useful. Wikipedia, and I was not really sure who set that up or anything, but I guess、yeah. it's a guy by the name of Jimmy Wales, and he is known for leading the team that. Created Wikipedia, so I guess he was a member of a team with other people, and he was leading that team. He was the leader of that team that created the online encyclopedia, Wikipedia. Right. So he, along with some other guys, got together and were the team that created Wikipedia. His newest project is what we're talking about now. Is a plan to apply similar principles to a new area, news. So it's going to be built and run the way that Wikipedia is currently. Now I don't know about our listeners, but I personally have never gone to Wikipedia and. Added or changed or suggested any content, but that is the way it's done today. Anyone can go, and if they don't agree with something, they can write into Wikipedia. And you know, kind of debate the content and offer a different viewpoint or a different source for information. So that's how he's going to be trying to run his new project. He's calling it Wiki Tribune. I mentioned Tribune before we started. A Tribune is a type of newspaper. Most of the newspapers around the world are either named a Tribune or some sort of news, like New York Daily News or the Register. Yeah, the Register is also very the popular. Times. Yeah, so his is the Tribune, Wiki Tribune. That's the name they've come up with. I suppose the biggest Tribune is the Chicago Tribune in the United States, at least. And so this is about news. If you see the word Tribune there, and it is designed to be a 100% ad-free website funded solely by donations from readers. So they're not going to have any ads or advertisements there, but they still need money. So it's going to be funded. By donations from readers. Here, the word "fund" is being used as a verb that just means to provide money for something, to provide money for some kind of project, to fund a TV program, for example,、mm. to collect donations, may fund something. In this particular case, it's when you give money to something, you make a donation. You might、uh, make a donation to your favorite charity, for example. I would like to donate five hundred dollars to save the children or whatever. But、mm. in this particular case. Hey, yeah, the readers of this、uh, website are going to give them money in some way or another. Maybe press the donate card or something, and then give them a credit card number, and you're good to go. Do you ever donate to Wikipedia? I haven't donated to Wikipedia, but I try to make donations to my favorite online radio stations. Oh, really? Okay. Because I listen to them a lot,、uh -huh. so I think they probably should get some donations, and they are commercial-free or ad-free. Yeah, some of the freeware I've downloaded, you know, to use on my computer, is free. But they ask for donations, and sometimes I actually give it to them、mm. because it's very useful. So it was. Designed to be 100% ad-free, and they're hoping listeners like you and me are willing to go and add some、uh, donations to keep them in business. Now, news articles will list all their sources, and readers can not only check them out but also suggest corrections. That's kind of the way Wikipedia works today. So their Tribune is going to be similar. Now, if you list your sources, your sources are where you get your news from. Maybe you interview a couple of people and you ask them questions. They're your sources. Maybe you look something up online on a website other than Wikipedia, and you got some info that way. That would be a source. And the best journalists out there come up with two sources who are saying the same thing, and those. 
anonymous. Two sources aren't usually both anonymous. That's a problem with today. Everybody's an anonymous source, meaning they don't want to say who they are. They don't want to give their name, but they have lots of juicy gossip to share. They do, but in this particular case, you do need to list your sources so people can verify your information. Yeah. The readers can check out those sources, but they can also suggest corrections. Well, I have this other source that says this, and then later they'll get closer and closer to the truth. Now, Jimmy Wales noticed that people's trust in news agencies has weakened. If something weakens, it gets weaker. It's not as strong as before, so people just don't trust news agencies as much as they used to. Yes, even reputable institutions. I'm not going to name any because I might get in trouble, but、uh, they've been found publishing stories that were actually turned out to be false. True. So yeah. yeah, people are just not trusting news agencies like they have before. Yeah, that's really the case. Well, they're saying that these news articles can be biased. If you're biased, you lean or support one opinion over another. You're not really objective. That's what journalists and journalism is supposed to be—an objective look at news, where you just report the facts. But nowadays, we're seeing that everyone's biased, or they're using bad sources. I talked about the anonymous sources. Sometimes they turn out to be completely false, untrue. And are sometimes even false. So, therefore, Wiki Tribune is going to focus on providing people with transparent journalism that they know they can trust. We hear that a lot. Oh, we're going to be very transparent in how we run our company. If you're transparent, it means it's easy to see through you. For example, ladies sometimes our dresses, the fabric that we use to make the dress, it's not very thick. It's very thin. You can see through. So we need to have a slip on underneath. But、uh, here, if something's trans. Transparent, you can easily see what's going on. No one's trying to hide anything, and that's the big, I guess, the big word today in in journalism. Oh, we're transparent. You can see exactly where we're getting our news, and you know how we're writing things up. And in other words, you can trust us. But again, the media is probably the least trusted group of people around the world right now. Right now, unfortunately, that's the case.、Yeah. And the noun form is transparency, and so they need to provide. By transparent journalism,、yeah. that people know they can trust it, so people can trust it, and its team of ten journalists will be working together with readers to bring reliable, fact-based journalism to the internet. A journalist is basically a reporter, and they're going to be working together to bring these reliable bits of news. Reliable means you can trust it. Are you a reliable person? Can you be trusted? And it's going to be fact-based. It's not going to be based on opinions and editorials and stuff like that. The site will also publish information about its funding regularly to show people it has no conflicts of interest. So they're going to be transparent by publishing the information about its funding.、Mm -hmm. In other words, they're going to tell us where they're getting their money, who's giving them donations, so that way they can show that they're not biased, that they have no conflicts of interest. Yeah, if you have a conflict of interest, it means you can't report or give information about something without being biased towards one side or another. If someone's giving you money, it's very hard to then turn around and report negative things on that particular company or group of people. So. So if you have a conflict, it means there is an argument、uh, between the two groups, or a difference of opinion. You could say, my dad's an attorney, and he would often talk about conflicts of interest. He couldn't represent the husband of somebody that he knew the wife already, and he'd been friends with both of them. Say they want to get a divorce, he can't really represent the husband and be fair because he knows about the wife because they used to be friends. So anyway, a conflict of interest often comes up in politics. Especially, though, in law, police, in a court of a trial, there'll be a conflict of interest. So you got to watch out for that. If you make conflict of interest plural, guys, notice that you put the s on conflict, but not on interest. You can't say there are lots of conflict of interests going on. No. It's a conflicts of interests, kind of tricky. Exactly. So to show they have no conflicts of interest, or to show that they're not biased, and Wales hopes that by involving People in the process of writing news, he can make them feel they can trust it. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens there to see if this is a reputable news organization or just another source of gossip and fake news. Okay, everybody, we're going to take a little bit of a break right now, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with our next news story.
Okay, everybody, let's continue with our next news story. You probably already know this, but、uh, way back in June, at the beginning of summer, there was some tragic news, and、uh, we found out that Shi Bolin had died in a helicopter crash in Hualien. So the title of our second article is "Taiwan Mourns Shi Bolin Beyond Beauty Director." So in this title here, we have the word "mourn," and M O U R N is the spelling. It means that you feel sorrow or regret or sadness because usually some Somebody died.、Mm. You are mourning the death of your pet cat, for example, if that happens. I didn't really feel bad when、uh, my brother's cat died. Actually, I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, I guess not everybody's attached to pets at home. Tom's not attached, but anyway, it was very sad. I remember hearing this news, thinking, "Oh, he's so young." We always hate it when young people die, especially. Now it says here that Taiwan lost a beloved talent on June 10th. This word "beloved" could be "beloved," "beloved," or "beloved." The pronunciation is correct both ways: "beloved," "beloved." So, if you're beloved or "beloved," you're dearly loved. People adore you. And in Taiwan, he had been considered to be quite. A talented director, although he had started his career as a director quite late in life. Really,、mm. a lot of these directors get started when they're, you know, like fifteen, and they're walking around trying to film things with their little cameras when they're young. But he had always had a love for film, but he didn't get a chance to do it until he was older. There's probably a lot of people out there who had to put away their dreams of being、yeah. an artist or a rock star or a ballerina or something because they had to focus on practical matters. You can't make money, so you better study banking or engineering or something like that. Pay、but、the bills, yeah, exactly. And you know, if you want to get married and have kids, you got to have money there. So yeah,、mm-hmm. you had to work in work in the bank at your boring bank job for twenty years, and finally said, "Enough! I'm going to pursue my dream. I'm going to do what I want to do." So that's what he did, as we're going to find out here. But in, unfortunately, here he's a distinguished director, which means he's famous. Everybody knows about him. Like Ang Lee is a distinguished director from Taiwan,、mm-hmm. and he perished in a helicopter crash. To perish means to pass away. It's just another way of saying die. There are so. So many words to describe death, aren't there? Yeah, unfortunately, a helicopter crash. Those are the type of aircraft that have the blades on top of it that go around very quickly. They're pretty dangerous. There seem to be a lot more helicopter crashes than plane crashes, but. Yeah, I've never been in a helicopter. I don't know if I'd want to go.、Neither. Yeah, yeah, it sounds kind of scary, especially、yeah. after seeing this piece of news. I、here. know. And my family lives in Arizona. We have the Grand Canyon there, and they have helicopter tours. And we've had a lot of people actually die on those tours. So I've never wanted to get in、hmm. the helicopter and go. Although you get a great view from up above. Now, best known, it says for his film Beyond Beauty. Colon Taiwan from above. We often use that colon. It's kind of a subtitle. So the main title is Beyond Beauty, and then there's the colon, which is a, a form of punctuation, which kind of tells you a little bit more about a story or a book, a paper. When I wrote my paper for college, I had a subtitle on mine too. Da da colon Taiwan from above. It's a great look at how beautiful this country really is, seen from above, which we don't get to look at that. View very often, do we? Even flying into Taiwan and landing at the airport, you don't get much of a a good look at Taiwan. But that helicopter just floats above and gives you beautiful shots of how beautiful this island is. I was pretty amazed when I saw some of the scenes. It's gorgeous here. Unfortunately, I did not see this film in the theater. It would have been best to see it on a big screen yeah, totally. at high resolution.、Yeah. I saw parts of it on TV,、mm. but I don't think that's the same. But in any case, I guess that film was pretty successful because. He was scouting locations for the film's sequel when the helicopter he was in crashed in Hualien County, not Hualien City, but Hualien、yeah. County. It's kind of mountainous there in Hualien County. So if you're scouting a location for a film, that means you're looking for a place to film your movie. Basically,、mm-hmm. I think Martin Scorsese,、yep. of course, came to Taiwan first. He was scouting locations for a film about Japan, and he thought that hey, Taiwan actually looks more like Japan than Japan does. So he made the Film here. I, I can't remember the title of his latest film.、Uh, Silence. Some, 
silence. Oh, silence. that was silence. Yeah, yeah, something about missionaries in Japan or yeah, something like Catholic, that. Yeah, Catholic Catholic uh, missionaries. Yeah. So this is a, kind of a popular place for some directors. It's kind of fun to have the directors here. It's not surprising, is it? No. So we was looking around or scouting locations for the film sequel. A sequel is a version of something that comes after the first version of something. So, for example, Star Wars had three sequels, two sequels when I was growing up, and then it came back with three more films. Those are also, I think, those were prequels, which means those were films that actually preceded the films that、uh, first came out in the seventies and eighties. So. Unfortunately, that helicopter crashed in Hualien County, and also let's not forget that the pilot and Chi's assistant also died in that crash. Now, Chi was inspired to film Taiwan from above while working as a civil servant. What's a civil servant? A civil servant is someone who works for the government. A civil servant would include people who work in the post office, you know, or people who work in one of the ministries in the government. They're civil servants. So if you see that. Those two words, civil servant, together, it just means they're working for the government in some way. Yeah, it's、uh, probably not a terribly exciting job, but it's steady. You get benefits、yeah. and you get、uh, retirement when you retire.、Mm -hmm. You get、uh, pensions afterwards. So, in order to make his dream a reality, he quit his job at age forty-seven and mortgaged his house to pursue filmmaking. His parents were probably aghast. What the heck are you doing? Doing that? Quitting your job? Don't you know that's a steady job?、Mm -hmm. You need to save money for retirement. And I guess he didn't have enough money, so he mortgaged his house. That's like taking a loan. Out from the bank, and then you have your house be the collateral. I guess the bank can、uh, take your house if you don't pay the loan back, and then you'll be living under a bridge at that point. Yeah, so he probably had already paid off his house, or maybe his parents gave him a house. He didn't owe anything on it, so he can go to the bank and say, "Hey, I want to mortgage it." So, like Tom said, you get some money for the house, and if you don't make the payments, then the bank owns your house.、Mm. So, his first film was a huge success, becoming the highest-grossing documentary in Taiwan's history. When you see、uh, highest-grossing, it just means how much money a movie pulled in, or how much money a movie made. It's a documentary. Which means it isn't fiction; it's real about some real topic, and we know it's about Taiwan's history,、uh, or Taiwan's landscape, and how beautiful it is here. So that's pretty amazing. If your first film is the highest-grossing documentary in your country, what did she want to accomplish? Well, he wanted to portray the impact that humans have on our natural environment. Shooting dramatic pictures and videos of construction, tourism, and mining operations. We often use this word "portray" when we're talking about drama. An actor will often portray a character, but you can also portray something by writing about it. An author can portray something just by, through words. So you don't need visuals; you can actually use words. An artist can portray by using their artistic talent to show what something looks like. He wanted to portray the impact or what was happening because humans are in there, kind of hurting our natural environment. He wanted to show people what was going on around the country. I think he kind of mixed things together. He showed、yeah. really beautiful places, and then he showed these big construction projects or mining operations and stuff like that, as we'll get to later on、yeah. in this paragraph. But he wanted to reveal or portray the impact, the influence. Or the effect that humans have on our natural environment, shooting dramatic pictures and videos of construction, tourism, and mining operations, all from above, filming from a helicopter. Nowadays, I suppose you could film from drones、yep. or whatever. They do. They do film from drones. I guess it would be safer that way. I've as seen、well. it happen. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Lots of videos posted on YouTube of、uh, aerial photography.、Mm -hmm. That's what that's called if you shoot from above aerial photography. But he was showing. Uh, videos of construction. So yeah, when they're building big construction projects and stuff like that. Also, tourists flocking to various places, maybe、yeah. to Ali Shan or Kending or something like that. And also mining operations. I didn't know they were still involved in mining operations. I knew they were doing mining out there on is that Route 106 there out、uh, Pingxi out there.、Mm. They used to have mines out there or、uh, Jingguash or something. You have to have mines there. Mining is the industry when people go on the ground and bring out minerals and stuff like that. But I guess it's still going on, and mining operations. 
Does or do cause certain damage to the environment? Yeah, it hurts the environment. Even though we need some of that, you know, those minerals that they're pulling out, it does hurt the environment. Well, despite the negative human impact or you know the influence that humans have had on the land, he ended his movie with a message of hope. It was pretty beautiful. He had a choir of kids who were singing at the top of Mount Yu or Yushan, and they were singing really beautiful music. Now this choir, a choir is just a group of people singing together. An Aboriginal just means the people who inhabited a land or existed in a place from the very earliest of times. So they had the Aboriginal kids singing on the top of the mountain. Now we're calling the top of the mountain the peak. Peak is used for different things. We'll often use it to talk about when something is at its highest level. For example, if you want to go somewhere exciting, but it's the Peak season—that's when most of the tourists want to go because the weather's nice. You're going to have to pay more. But the peak of a mountain is the very top part of the mountain. The very bottom part of a mountain is the foot of the mountain. So peak and foot. There you go. And so I guess he had these kids hike up there, and then he filmed them singing. Beautiful. At the very top of Yushan, as you said, the peak is the top of a mountain. Don't confuse that word with the word peak, p e e k,、mm. which means to look at something usually in kind of a sneaky way. And peak can also be a noun. Take a peek at this.、Mm. Look at this. But this p e a k means the top of Yushan, and this was a very emotional message、uh, that he wrote on the screen. Emotional means it's full of emotions. It's probably going to cause you to cry or maybe be emotionally affected by that. Guys can't show those tears, you know. But maybe the girls will. Go start looking for their handkerchiefs and pull them out and、uh, stop those tears from flowing. And the message appears on the screen, and the message reads, "Let us work together to make our home a better place." Yeah, it's a wonderful message. It's going to take everybody working together to preserve our natural environment. Because you know, if people can figure out a way to make a quick buck or a quick dollar, they're going to do it. I remember when I went down to Sun Moon Lake about ten years ago. I was really disappointed to see all of the tourists and the stuff that had been built up and constructed in that area, kind of ruined the natural environment and what it looked like. So we got to work hard to take care of this beautiful country that is ours. Right now, guys, it's about time to wrap up. We hope that you、uh, learned a few new phrases, a few new words today, and、uh, didn't miss our Chinese teacher too much. For English Digest, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye.、Bye.